Welcome back. So this is our last video on JavaScript objects for the next few units. And in this video, we're going to cover JavaScript methods. Before we do that, I just want to explain my setup. I have a simple HTML file, and all I have is a few notes here just for us to follow. So you absolutely don't need to type this up if you want to follow along. You can just do this in the console or make your own file, um, but you don't need this HTML. So what I'm going to do is start by talking about what methods are. So in JavaScript, we've seen that we can make an object. I'm just going to make one called obj, obj, and we can put whatever type of data we want inside of that object. So we could have a name, that's a string, chuck, we could have an age, that's a number, we could have an is cool, that's a boolean, we could have friends, which is an array, and friends can just be Bob and Tina. But what I'm interested in showing you in this video is that we can actually add functions as properties to an object. In that case, they're actually called methods rather than properties. So again, a method is just a function that is a property inside of an object. So I can make one here. Let's just call it add. Add is a function. And it takes two numbers, x and y. And all that it does, if I indent this properly, is return x plus y. So the big thing that's new here is that we're just adding a function. It doesn't matter what the function does. Any function will work here. And we're just setting it as a value for the property add. So if I hit enter here and we look at obj, you can see it's an object. And we have age, 45, friends, an array, is cool, false, name, chuck. And then add is a function. So if we wanted to call add, we can't just write add anymore. What we need to do is write obj.add, just like this. And then let's give two numbers, 10 and 5, and we get 15. So calling it works the same way. We need our parentheses. We need arguments. The only difference is it's not just on its own like this. It's actually now inside of the obj object. So this might look a little bit familiar from something like this, console.log exactly the same format. And it turns out that the console is an object and log is a method on that object. And we're calling it just like we called object.add. So they work exactly the same way. So you might be wondering, why would we ever want to add a method to an object? Why not just have our functions defined separately like this? Why do we need to add it inside of the obj object? There's a few reasons. The first is that it helps you keep your code organized so you can group things logically together. To illustrate one of the benefits of adding your functions as methods on an object, I'm gonna do a quick example here. So we're gonna go back to our favorite example of cats and dogs, and let's say that I wanted to make a method called speak. And let's suppose I wanted to make a function called speak. And speak, all that it needs to do is return woof. So this is for a dog. Return woof, and that's it. Very simple, and I can call speak like this, and I get woof. Let's suppose that I also want a method called speak to work for cats, and it should return meow. Well, if I write function speak, and I return meow, and this time I call speak, I get meow. But now I have no way of accessing my original speak that returned woof. So what happened here is something called a namespace collision. So that's just a fancy way of saying that we have two different things that have the same name. So if we instead added these functions as methods to an object, we could have two different things named speak by putting them in different namespaces. So it's really simple to do that. We could just make something called var dog space, and that's just an empty object. And then we just say dog space dot speak is a function and we return woof. And we do the same thing for var cat space. So dog space and cat space are just names I'm making up, and they're just going to be empty objects that we add our methods to. So then I can say cat space dot speak equals function, and all we do here is return meow. So if I want to call speak 
for a dog, I want it to return woof. All I have to do is write dog space dot speak. And if I want to see meow, all I need to do is run cat space dot speak. So again, this is just a fancy, so this is just a nice way of organizing our code first of all, so that we could have a bunch of methods that are grouped logically together. So all the dog methods go into that dog space, all the cat methods go into that cat space. But it's also a way to avoid these namespace collisions. I know by now you're tired of dogs and cats and it doesn't seem like a very real world example, but I can assure you the same exact logic applies for something like comments and posts and tags. We might have a method called new or delete. For comments, we might have one called delete for posts, another one called delete for users, and we need to have those namespace properly so that they don't all conflict. So rather than just writing delete, we would have user.delete, and then we might have post.delete and comment.delete. And we will see things like that all the time when we get to backend programming. So to sum up what we've covered so far, we're able to add methods to an object, which means we're adding a function as a property. And we can add it just like any other property, treat it just like a string or a number. And that's because functions are values in JavaScript. We can pass them around, we can add them as a value to an object, which is really, really useful. The second thing we talked about is why you would ever do that. The first reason we talked about is that it prevents namespace collisions, which really just means we can group code together that means that we can have properties and functions and methods that are named exactly the same way, except they're stored in different objects so that they don't conflict.